You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI Show where Chris Lauren takes us through how to do experiments in AI using machine learning inside of Azure Machine Learning Service using specifically Visual Studio Code Tools for AI. See you then. <music> Welcome to this brand new and shiny episode of the AI Show where we're actually going to do a machine learning problem Sweet. with some of the tools we talked about in one of the previous shows. So make sure you check that one out too. I've got here my friend Chris Lauren. How are you doing, buddy? Good. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. So we talked a little bit about uh, Azure Machine Learning Service. We talked about the workspace and all the good doodads that were in there. We also talked about how Visual Studio Code Tools for AI allows you to do some stuff. But I thought. I figured it would be better to just like go through an actual problem. So as a data scientist, let's pick a random problem like the one we always pick when we do these kind of demos. Yeah, it's completely random. Random. Like let's do hand digit recognition. Perfect. You know, I, I feel like we can do that. It sounds like a hard problem and no one's ever done that. So long before. as it's not my handwriting. That's right. That's right. So let's do this. How would you go about solving that problem as a data scientist? And then I want you to show us how the tooling is going to help support that. So how, where would you start? Sure, absolutely. I'd start at the same place everyone else starts because if you look anywhere on the internet, they tell you to use Jupyter Notebooks. Of course. Of right? course. So Jupyter Notebooks are really awesome. You can both document exactly all the steps that you're doing as well as uh, step through the code and share it with others. Oh, which nice. Is, it's which is like wonderful. a learning environment. Yeah, absolutely. So you can both document what you did as well as do it and get quick uh, visibility into how things are going. Which if I'm is, being which a thousand percent honest, I'm basically using it to make sure it's doing the right thing. It's like a poor man's unit test. Sort of, sort of. It's, mo it's more than that for data exploration mm -hmm. and stuff too, which yeah. is pretty awesome. However, uh, I'm going to show you how to use Jupyter Notebooks in a way that you may have never seen before okay, inside it. my favorite code editor, Visual Studio Code. Mm -hmm. So the Visual Studio Code tools for AI has added functionality so I can actually just open up Jupyter Notebooks right inside Visual Studio Code. Hey now. And that's important because for me personally and a lot of other data scientists I know, well, I, you start with Jupyter Notebooks, but then take the code that works. Like once I figured out, oh yeah, this experiment's really going to work. So then I'll take the code out, put it in, in VS Code. I'll step through debug, refactor, sure. check it into source control, all that sort of stuff, right? And so uh, th this is fully working Jupyter Notebook. We can step through and, and run it inside VS Code, which is awesome. So oh. is, the, is the Jupyter server, run, where is it running? It's on my local machine. Oh, okay. So Visual Studio Code creates the Jupyter server for you, and That's then right. it runs it on top. Okay, cool. That's right. Absolutely. Uh, now, when you take your training script out of the Jupyter Notebook, mm -hmm. then again, this is you know any other Python code I can step through, I can debug on my local machine, okay. wh which is great. And to use this with Azure Machine Learning, then I simply want to make sure and get a handle to the Azure Machine Learning run. So if I step through and debug without using Azure Machine Learning just for maximum agility on my local machine, then I may not have a run context, so I just want to catch this error here, right? But then if I do get a, a handle to a run, then I can use some of the AML Python SDK functionality to like log metrics so that we can see those fancy charts that I showed you earlier. So let's, let's, let, me, let me see if I can under, uh, understand this. So I've already had my own training Python, let's just say I'm using, I'm writing some crazy GAN that generates images, for example, using PyTorch. Yep. This will basically be able to run as is already. Yeah. When I'm adding Absolutely. this run stuff, what it's doing is it's allowing me to produce even more intelligent things on the output that not only I can see, but that others will be able to see inside of the workspace. That's right. Okay, cool. Absolutely. Because as you can see, while you were talking, I went ahead and just right clicked and ran the Python file in a terminal. Mm -hmm. And you can see locally here, we can see the accuracy um, while the model's training, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. However, nobody else on my team is seeing this, and I'm certainly not keeping track of it. So I can show my boss later you know, how, how this one beat the previous version and blah, blah, blah. So, right? quick question. Usually, I'm doing like print statements in my Python script. Is just the standard print statements being saved as well when you're running an experiment? Absolutely. Okay. All, all, of, all the standard out, standard error, all the logs get, get automatically uploaded. And anything that you write into a folder called outputs in your local directory as well, 
So you can see I just trained this TensorFlow model and then output this into this local directory here. Mm -hmm. And when running in the context of Azure Machine Learning, then it'll automatically upload that to the cloud as well and just keep track. I don't have to write any code to do that. Awesome. So the reason why you would add this run little uh, object is because then you could get some even better visualizations than you would just like a log dump, which is usually what we're used to looking at. This way you can get visualizations of accuracy, there's a cost function going down, et cetera. That, that's right. Yeah. And uh, Azure Machine Learning fully works with TensorBoard and other visualizations as well, but not all of the different machine learning frameworks have some sort of visualizer. So this is a great way to get one in a standard way across all of your different experiments. Okay, the other thing that wasn't altogether clear to me is you ran this locally. I sure did. And it was just basically like any other run, it was running on your local machine. The only difference is that you added some, some AML or Azure Machine Learning logging out, and that's it. That's all I added. However, I did not run this using Azure Machine Learning yet. Okay. So let me show you how to do that. Perfect. So in order to use Azure Machine Learning, we click over to the Azure Activity Bar right here, mm -hmm. and you can see this Azure Machine Learning Workspace view in, uh, in VS Code. Mm -hmm. You can see my team workspaces right here that we talked about before, mm -hmm. and all of my different experiments are under this experiment node. Okay. Now, to take this code that's on my local machine and attach it and use Azure Machine Learning, then I literally right click here and say attach folder to experiment. And when I, when I do that, then I can select my experiment, my workspace and my experiment name. And this one's already attached. So it threw a little error and said, hey, you're already attached, you're good. So when you're running, like let's just say we, didn't, we weren't attached and we didn't run it using Azure Machine, where are these logs going to? The, they're just on the local machine, okay. just like any other Python experiment inside VS Code. Nice. Even if you're using the Azure AML run context. Correct, mm -hmm. Beca because it, all I did is I try to get the context, but then it failed and it said, oh, oh I it. didn't have a context, it. but it j I just caught it and I wrote it out saying, hey, I'm not using AML right now. So let me show you how to use AML okay. now, okay? So those log statements weren't really doing anything. Those weren't. Were, okay, got it, okay, that correct. makes sense now, that, perfect. That, that's right. So in order to actually use Azure Machine Learning with my local compute, then we have this notion of uh, compute here, mm -hmm. where I can create compute over in Azure, and that's super easy. Let me show you how to do that re real quick. So I could create compute, I could create a, a batch AI cluster, I could give that a name, and then I can select a, a VM that has a type of GPU in I it. I like that you actually describe them because I have had a bear of a time with the names. I don't know what's going on, so this is super helpful. Yeah, absolutely. So we can select one of these, and then I can specify how many of these machines do I want in my cluster. And notice, again, the min count here is zero, meaning that when there's no jobs running, the cluster completely tears itself down and I'm not paying for anything while I'm not using That's it. That's pretty cool. Which is great. However, I already have a cluster here, and for each one of these compute contexts, we need to create a run configuration. This keeps track of which script am I running, what parameters am I passing to oh, it, and a, f and a few other things like that. So I can repeat the experiment over and over if I would like to. So if you're running the experiment in the context of a run configuration, that's where the run object will start to exist and do some magic. That's exactly things. right. And so we can see when I attach my folder to the, to the workspace, to the experiment, then it automatically created a local run compute context config here. And I can just simply right click this and I can say run experiment. And when I run experiment, then now you'd see this is submitting the job. Instead of just starting, starting the TensorFlow job right away, it says, okay, now submitting job has succeeded. Now it's submitting the job, it's, keep, it's getting that run context, mm -hmm. and then it's actually running it on my local machine. So here's a question, and this is, because usually when I'm setting these things up, I have a lot of Python files. How does it know which file to run? Sure, absolutely. I'll show you one second while it's running, but first I want to show you this little toast notification. Okay. So it said, okay, the job is submitted, and I can click View Experiment Run. And so when I click this, then this will open up the same view of that Azure oh, cool. portal that I saw earlier right inside VS Code. So I can keep track of all of my key metrics and such. And that's when running. running doing that run.log stuff that's is right. actually going to start saving stuff. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Yep. And we can tell exactly what is going to happen inside this run 
by uh, edit run configuration, we can see in here it says, oh, please use the train.py file. Perfect. And then we can also see there's a number of other optional settings in here. For example, we can look and see, okay, well, which Python interpreter path did I want to use? Because I have a bunch of different sure. you know, Python environments. And I can also specify whether I want to you know, manage my own dependencies. The user managed dependencies equals true. By default, it's actually going to create it with false, mm -hmm. meaning that Azure Machine Learning will manage all of your dependencies for you. Okay. And so then in this conda dependencies file, then this is where it'll you specify what you want to pip install, what you want to conda install, and that enables AML to create a, a, an environment that is actually portable. Uh, so if you run this on a GPU, VM, and Azure, or you run it on your local machine, mm -hmm. all the definitions of what different libraries you should have in that environment are in this file. That's cool. And Azure Machine Learning will automatically create that environment for you based on that definition. So That's it's cool. completely repeatable by everyone in your team, which is fantastic. So while this is still running, just a, a, a couple of other questions. Mm -hmm. Like when it says that it's running it locally, is it running it just like you would normally run it, or is it doing something else? It's doing it just like it would do locally, uh, with the addition of having a driver script um, that actually kicks it off and does things like uh, determines whether it needs to prepare that environment. It, it then instantiates your run in the environment you specify, mm -hmm. and then it automatically uploads all of the outputs. Uh, so the log files as well as your trained model. Because you can see that in my outputs folder, I've got this trained TensorFlow model. Mm -hmm. But in this experiment, you can see it's completed. You can see in this outputs, I didn't write any code to upload this model. I it see. automatically got uploaded to Azure. And it'll keep track of all, of, all of the outputs. So if you output like an ROC curve or like you know any kind of images, that sort of stuff, will all show up and be associated with that experiment run automatically. And that, that's, that's really nice because like now you actually have a place where, because look, I'm going to be honest with you. When I'm writing these things, it's pretty harrowing for me because sometimes like basically these things never work the first time and then you're iterating for weeks sometimes, and I get lost of what I actually tried and what I didn't, and this actually helps me remember everything that was tried. That's uh, right. Which is pretty amazing. Uh, absolutely. So let's go ahead and, uh, and test this model that, that I just trained. Uh, so I just have a test local script here, and we can go ahead and run this mm -hmm. again. And so this is going to simply load up, show you a, a, some sample data here, and then it'll actually score it. Mm -hmm. And we can see the, the labels and, and the predictions right, right here. You can see most of them are, are, are accurate. Mm -hmm. it's, and this particular one was 96% uh, or so accurate. Uh, we can see like in this one, there's a five instead of a six, uh, for example, in the cool. prediction. So. so the last thing I want to ask you, if we could go back to the Azure, the Azure uh, tab that we had before that shows all the yeah. Azure Machine Learning service. No, not that one. The one in Visual Studio Code. Oh, sure. Sorry. Uh, in what, the, what, the Docker run config, what's the difference between running the Docker run config versus the local config? So that's just specifying whether I want to use uh, Docker on my local machine or, or, I, or I don't. Mm -hmm. uh, again, there's just different configuration settings. So if I wanted to prepare a Docker image and then run my experiment in that Docker image on my local machine, uh, I absolutely could. And, and that's helpful yeah, because so. if I'm going to scale out to that GPU cluster, for example, I want to make sure that all of my dependencies, for example, are properly installed and prepared in that Docker container. So again, test it out first locally and then scale it out in the cloud. And it's also nice that it, get, it makes it so that it's a repeatable thing because if it's in a container, it's its own execution environment that has all the definitions of what in there, what's in there with the conda dependencies and what's running. If it runs in that Docker container, it should run everywhere. That, that's absolutely right. Awesome. Now, not only will Azure Machine Learning help you create a Docker container for testing your models, or training your models, but also for testing them and deploying them to production as well. Awesome. So well, let's talk about that in the next episode. I feel like we, we're already like at, at 14 minutes. And what I want to do is I want to say, this has been awesome because I've learned a lot about how to do actual experiments inside of Azure Machine Learning Service using the awesome tools. In the next episode, let's take a look at how we actually use the output in a meaningful way. What do you think? Yeah, sounds great. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for watching. You've learned all about how to do experiments using 
Azure Machine Learning Service, and the Visual Studio Code tools for AI. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care.